characteristic do you think is particularly to or what characteristic such as you say mood, uh, plot, stories, the character setting, do you think really drives a good horror novel? Um, there's uh, quite a few different styles of horror. Uh, I'm trying to think of maybe an ultimate universal uh, technique in horror. I, I think essentially putting your characters uh, in a situation where they do not want to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's essentially what uh, I keep doing. And at least in my heart, uh, my heart character actors of horror, uh, graphic novel, and the beat is a horror novel. And mm -hmm. uh, both, both actually are, uh, both are about uh, people trying to better themselves. Mm -hmm. And the world they enter is just more horrible than they even imagine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, when, when I write Harvard, I try to just use what scares me. Because the stuff that scares me is usually stuff that's in the back of your head or uh, in the corner of your eye that just should not be there. All right. And I um, actually noticed reading back uh, in my book, there's a couple of scenes where people are uh, in bed mm -hmm. and uh, you know just sleep and uh, you know things sneak into their uh, room and that's always been something that's always troubled me and uh, just you know things uh, scare me but I think I think yeah that's that's basically what I, I, I can really try. Do you want to see what the audience thinks about that? No. Well, I mean, one, I mean, because as I said, you know, you know, if you're writing a board, I mean, basically, it's, I guess, giving the audience what it wants. What do you think is the most important element of a war novel? Is it the characters? Is it the setting? Is it the mood? I mean, of course, it's a, a lot of people may say it's the combination of a lot of things. What do you think? I, I personally think uh, characterization, the characters are important regardless of genre. Right. Um, you know, if you have a love story and your, your, your characters aren't romantic, then you're not going to feel it. If you have a mystery and the characters aren't drawn into it, you're not going to have a mystery. Right. If you have a horror story and your characters aren't feeling whatever it is in their gut, you're not going to have a horror story. You have to feel the emotion of horror in order for it to be a horror story. So we may have all the trappings, and they have blood and gore and guts, mm -hmm. but if it doesn't have character, good, strong characters that right. the readers can appreciate and can relate to and can feel their fear and can fear their vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. then you know the, the horror story is going to be just you know, you know, step on a page. I, th I think that's in a way what Stephen King's gift is. Is I mean, for one, he's got a vivid imagination, but he makes it happen to everyday folks. And His characters. Yeah. But it's but it's again, it's just I I think at least for me when I'm reading a, a Stephen King book, it's just that I I don't mean the word mundane in this case to be a, an insult. He puts in very mundane characters. Again, not boring, but they're he right. really makes this everyday who have everyday concerns and then they are really put into a situation that no person would really want to ever have to face. And I think that's what you know what his true gift is. <laughs> Um, I love, well, it actually he's written several books, but I like that the one last book I've read of this was Cell. And I just remember how it opened with a guy who was actually a comic book yeah. writer just walking down the street one day in Boston. And, you know, he's all, he's kind of high on life because, you know, he's just gotten this contract. You know, he's going to get his comic books now going to get published. And then all of a sudden, the whole world starts to end literally all around him. And, I mean, that is just classic king. Yeah, and, and thinking, you know, since this is a panel on first novels, and I don't mean to be interjecting. No, this no, no, absolutely, but, absolutely. Um, speaking of Stephen King's first novel, yeah. you talk about a very ordinary situation. You have a girl in high school. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, how you can't get much more ordinary than that. Yeah. And uh, again, you, he puts you in her skin. Mm -hmm. You feel the horror she experiences at school and what she goes on, you know, what happens to her at home. Mm -hmm. And so you definitely, you know, it's the characters that just pull you right through. And, and I like that duality is because what, what you say is he kind of combines the you know, the actual horror of, you know, of her being able to do all these things because of these powers she had, to the little horror of what it's like to be a teenager in high school. And somebody, I remember somebody described The Shining as, you know, yes, it's got this horrible house with these, you know, this, this terrible past, but it's also about a story about a, a kid who has a very angry father. You know, and it's about, a kid, a, a, you know, the way parent, the kids look at their parents and sometimes be afraid of their parents. You know, so I, he really is an expert at really working on those different levels. Um, does anybody, anybody else want to add any? 
Yes, sir. Yeah, well, I think I agree with Bruce with what she said. The whole point of the horror genre is to deal with horror, to uh -huh. deal with fear, mm -hmm. things that cause fear, and to hopefully evoke it in the audience. And horror stories are about dealing with the causes of fear and overcoming them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if necessarily all horror stories are scary, because you can read a lot of kids' books that are marketed as horror stories and they're not necessarily scary, but they're still about things that can be scary. Field and the conventional tropes being things like ghosts and haunted houses and mummies and vampires and things like that. The whole point of the story is to really to deal with it in some way. And the beauty in horror is that it's, it can deal with the real actual fears in everyday life to deal with it in a symbolic manner. And a lot of the monsters and a lot of the um, tools that we use here in the genre directly relate to things we deal with in everyday life in one way or another. And I think that's where the real strength of the horror genre is and what it's trying to accomplish when it's working well. Mm -hmm. You know, and you point to the masters of it like Stephen King is because they, he knows that. When you read Dan's Macabre, his nonfiction treatise about the horror, he, he divides up the genre like in different categories. He's using the symbolic tarot deck and he's talking about what each you know, this is, these stories deal with you know, the notion of the other in our life. And these stories deal with the notion of being in a bad environment. And that's really where the power of the genre lies. And each genre deals with its focus on its own particular thing. You know, romance being focused on love right. and the human heart. And I think that if we're going to be really good horror writers, we should keep that in mind. Especially if we're writing our first horror novel. Right. You know, that's what we're trying to do.